Good morning, church. We're having a wonderful service today. It's such a blessing to have uh, Brother Josh and his family and, and their brand new baby. Such a blessing to see everybody here today. We had such an anointed worship service. The Lord had a, a word for us. Praise God. Amen. Today's sermon is entitled, Unquenchable Hope. Well, before we bow our heads in prayer, I will read from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in praise and thanksgiving for your many, many blessings. Lord, we praise you for pouring out your spirit today, for ministering to our hearts. We pray that you place within our hearts a desire to grow ever closer with you. May your will be done in our lives and give us the heart to seek your will. May you use each and every one of us as your instrument to minister to the world. We pray, Lord God, Heavenly King, that this message today will be seen and heard by all in whom you have called. Lord, we pray for our families, we pray for our church, we pray for our community and our nation. We pray that we all turn to you. We pray for revival, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. We praise you now and we praise you always for you alone are God. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. While researching for this sermon, I came across an historical sermon from a pastor named Dr. William E. Sangster entitled, When Hope is Dead, Hope On. The very sermon that God had placed upon my heart, I found so beautifully written beyond my own ability to write, I could not help but feel inadequate. That happens to each of us in times. We, we seem to feel so proud of ourselves for something we have accomplished, and then we are humbled. I am not at all discouraged in the call to the ministry by this, but instead I am encouraged to improve, to be a better instrument for God. I could not help but to be in awe of his sermon. His sermon was written with such eloquence that I was left with a wow moment as I just sunk back into my chair. Before I tell you a little bit about Pastor Sangster, I want to say that I have decided to write 
this sermon in the same style of Pastor Sangster to honor him and the great work that he had done so long ago. Pastor William Sangster was a Methodist minister in London during World War II. His sermon was first preached during one of the many challenging times of the war of the British for, for the British people as London was being bombed on a continual occurrence. Oftentimes during his sermons, the air, the air raid sirens would begin to blare. He was known for telling his hearers in those moments, those of a nervous disposition may leave now. The work of Pastor William Sangster and other great men of God at that time helped to shepherd the people of London through one of the darkest times of that city's history. Pastor William Sangster did not shy away from proclaiming truth and the reality of the world, and he did not falter in his proclamation of hope. He who lives on hope will die starving seems to be the sentiment of the world. Many would say that hope is an illusion, particularly for those who have experienced <coughs> hardship, pain, and trauma in life. A cynic may say that hope itself is absent any assurance whatsoever. When we walk through the streets, of our towns and our cities today, we see countless faces devoid of hope. On television and on the internet, we see stories of despair. Homelessness is on the rise and victims of violent crimes with increasing regularity. It would seem that hope is deceptive, leading those who cling to it to their own destruction. Soldiers who deploy into combat may arrive in war with hope. That hope oftentimes fades away. For the secular world who sees nothing beyond the immediate, what could there possibly be to provide them with hope? Life seems to be a continual repetition of one pain flowing into another. Life seems to be a continual repetition of one hardship flowing into another. Life seems to be a continual repetition of one evil beginning after another. It is quite common for old men to become cynical and jaded, particularly old men who have greatly suffered in life. A common assessment, therefore, in the world is that hope is in vain, the waste of time. And with that comes an acceptance of their pain. The New Testament presents hope in a different and unique way. The Apostle Paul speaks at great lengths on faith, hope, and love, acknowledging them as foundational virtues of the faith. Paul speaks of our hope in Christ at great lengths. In the epistle to the Hebrews, we read of a hope both sure and steadfast. <coughs> hope becomes central in the life of a believer. We as believers have a hope in all the promises of God. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and he is faithful to fulfill his promises to you and to me. We have a hope of the things to come 
in the promised return of our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. For the believer, hope is greater than the world because our hope is in the Lord. Why are there such conflicting views on hope between the secular world and Scripture? The world will tell you that hope is an illusion or a dream or a disease of the mind or that hope will lead you into destruction. The Bible tells us that hope is a reality, a fact, a virtue, and that hope endures. If we look at the world around us without understanding the difference, we may come to the wrong conclusion. Is hope foolishness? Is hope something that deceives us into a false sense of security? Or is our hope? A blessed assurance. Anyone who knows scripture will see that the answer is not difficult. What the world calls hope and what the Bible calls hope are vastly different things. Just like with all the things of God, the world, the devil himself presents a counterfeit. God gives you a promise, and the devil will present a counterfeit so he can steal your promise from you. God gives you hope, and the devil will tell you that it is an illusion. I will speak a bit here on the, the differences between a lower hope and a higher hope. A lower hope is more easily defined as optimism. Optimism is recognized in the medical community for being a key factor in the success of recovery following surgery. Those who proclaim themselves as optimists are viewed as having a good or positive outlook on life. As with many things, we tend to fall into the trap of applying some special virtue to varying aspects of our personality. Those who proclaim themselves as being a continual optimist are no different. Yes, optimism is good. Optimism, however, is a counterfeit for hope. We should not forget the value of optimism. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. This is something we have all heard. It's, it's a common saying. Optimism can get you through some challenging times. <clears throat> optimism, coupled with being motivated to endure forward is key to success of soldiers enduring hardships in the field, in training, and in war. This is something that I have intimate experience with. Optimism is good for our mental state in the short term, but it fails to generate results in the long term. Optimism alone fails and crumbles under continual hardships and trauma. Oftentimes, the worst cynics, those most jaded, are those who had previously been consummate optimists before the weight of the world fell upon them. To quote Pastor Sangster, of course we appreciate optimism and willingly admit its simple service to the community, but it has been immoderately praised and fully explains the world's cynicism concerning hope. Boisterous confidence, which has no solid foundation, looks pitifully ludicrous when crushing disappointment comes and deepens the contempt in which it is widely held by the disillusioned." End quote. 
It is better to be an optimist than a pessimist. Any one of us would be happier spending our time with an optimist rather than a pessimist. Spend any amount of time around a pessimist can be detrimental to your mental well-being while spending time with an optimist can lift our spirits and bring us encouragement. So yes, optimism comes with benefits all the while being a poor counterfeit for hope. Optimism can only endure so long as life's struggles are mild in nature. We should appreciate optimism and its many benefits while recognizing its ultimate failures. We should also recognize that there is something more. Hope is as different from optimism as is night from day. Optimism can be foolish for those who do not know Christ. Jesus Christ is the source of our trust and our hope. The world around us grows ever darker with each day. I have felt overwhelmed by the events of the world around us unfolding, as I'm sure many of us from time to time do. I have family members who carry themselves through with foolish optimism, absent faith in Christ. They have convinced themselves that there is a political solution to the problems of this world, making politicians in Washington to be some kind of savior for them. As authoritarianism waxes strong and our nation falls into ever more tyranny, I fear that these family members of mine will find themselves in a deep pit of despair. I tell them of the hope we have in Christ. Like so much in the world, they reject the gospel with mockery and ridicule. Let us all pray for our family members. Let us pray for our community. Let us pray for our nation that they will all come to know Christ. Let us pray for revival. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, the hearts of those in our family, in our community, and in our nation are drawn to Christ, and that there is a new fire and zeal placed in the hearts of all believers. Amen. the infallibility of truth. The world will tell you and I that truth is determined by the winners. The statement, the right side of history, we so often hear quoted from politicians and political talking heads, would be the version of historical events from the perspective of the victor though not necessarily rooted in any truth whatsoever. The world will tell you that truth itself is subjective. Your truth versus their truth versus my truth. I am telling you today that truth is singular and objectively true. By definition, there can only be one truth. The world will combat truth with their lies and propaganda. We are bombarded with propaganda from the moment that we wake up until we go to bed. We cannot watch a TV show or a movie or the news without being exposed to the propaganda of the world. The media will rephrase and reshape a story to be something unrecognizable to the truth. 
Three years ago, the media told us of the summer of love that was fiery but mostly peaceful. When in reality, they were violent riots rampaging through over 30 cities in this country, resulting in billions of dollars of damage and dozens of lives lost. The Attorney General of the United States recently stated that no one was above the law while the DOJ and the FBI were investigating and targeting Christians, churches, Catholics, and pro-life groups, as well as parents at school board meetings, as domestic terrorists, while ignoring the real threat of violence from leftist militant groups in this country. Propaganda is everywhere. It is pervasive, pervasive and it is systemic. <laughs> the media would have us believe that good is now evil and that evil is now good. Our society has fallen to such a degree that traditional family values are now counterculture. Get married and have a big family, suddenly you're a rebel. Our society has fallen to such a degree that traditional family values, anger, the secular world. I look at our country today and I do not recognize it. All these lies, all the propaganda, all the manipulations, they will fail in the end. Lies can win battles. <coughs> and they can drive culture and governments into destructive directions. Truth wins wars. Amen. Truth will always win. Our hope is in truth. The truth is not a what or a how but a who. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Truth was nailed to a cross and placed into a sepulcher and sealed with a stone and in three days that truth rose again unto life. Hallelujah. Truth is everlasting and cannot be extinguished. Truth is triumphant. Hallelujah. I want to take a moment to share a story that everyone present here knows. I want to share Sister Anne's story because it exemplifies perfectly today's message. In November... 2021, our church was hit with COVID. I myself got COVID, Pastor Dallas got COVID, and Sister Ann. But Sister Ann was hit harder than the rest of us. She ended up in the hospital, and by all accounts, statistically, she should have died. This family had not, not just optimism, they had a hope and a trust in the Lord. Amen. The Lord spoke to Sister Ann, telling her that she would make it through. I spent many a phone calls with Pastor Dallas, and I was encouraged by not his optimism, but for his hope in the Lord, boldly proclaiming, the victory, the healing that would come. God said it, and it came to be. Hallelujah. Amen. By his stripes, we are healed. Our God is good. He is good all the time. God is with you always. You are never, ever alone.
Another aspect of our hope is the knowledge that God is on his throne. God is sovereign over all. God places rulers into power and then removes them. God establishes nations and kingdoms and then tears them down. God's ways are not our ways. We must learn to trust in God's perfect plan and his perfect timing. To be able to face this dark world, we must know of the nature of suffering. The nature of suffering has puzzled mankind for millennia. Why do good people suffer while the wicked prosper? Not long ago, I preached on this very topic. God's righteous judgment never fails. Our suffering can come from one of three sources. Suffering can be a result of our own words and deeds. I'm going to tell you, now some might argue I still am, but for sure in my youth I was a knucklehead. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. And I had to make all my own mistakes. And let me tell you, I greatly suffered, not because I was being persecuted, not because there was some grand conspiracy against me. I was suffering because I was a knucklehead and I made some really bad decisions. You go out and run your mouth to the wrong person and get punched and stomped into the ground and you're going to get hurt. But guess what? That happened because you ran your mouth to the wrong person. Suffering, we can bring it upon ourselves. Our suffering can be the result of God testing us, putting us through the fiery forge of life to strengthen us. Sometimes our suffering may be the result of the evil deeds of others and even from the devil himself. God is patient. His time, his timing, his perfect timing is not your timing. God was patient with you when your life was lived in full rebellion to him. Throughout your life, the Holy Spirit worked on you to bring you where you are today. For a time, each of us resisted the pull of the Holy Spirit, yet God was patient with you. We must learn to be patient and to wait on the patience of God. I say again, trust in God's perfect plan and his perfect timing. God is still on his throne. Amen. Amen. Too often we pray selfishly, treating God as if he's some kind of divine ATM machine. And so often those prayers go unanswered. And they go unanswered because they are not conformed to the will of God. Let each of us pray. <laughs> for God's will to be revealed to us. We must trust in God always and rely on him. The world is on the brink of war. China has been waging economic and electronic warfare for years and are now poised to invade Taiwan. Such an invasion is likely to spark a new world war, and the sides have already been drawn. That war will not have the result that you may think it will have. We are seeing wars and rumors of wars. Totalitarian governments around the world are on the rise. We see this all over the globe, and sadly, 
It is most evident to us in our own government today. Freedom is an illusion. Democracy is an illusion. Even truth itself is obfuscated to facilitate the indoctrination of the masses. Europe has fallen into the hands of leftist ideologues that would deprive their people of even the simplest of liberties, sacrificing them on the altar to their secular gods of wealth and power. Ukraine is embroiled in a bitter war with Russia that itself has been a proxy war for the West. Thousands have died while thousands more are wounded. The war in Ukraine risks embroiling all of Europe into another continent-spanning conflict. How long before the world is embroiled in global conflict once again? We are seeing wars and rumors of wars. The lords of hell have been unleashed upon the world. Perversions and degeneracies are not only tolerated, but are celebrated. These demonic powers are targeting our culture, our families, our churches, and our children. Romans 1, 18-32 is clearly manifest all around us. The United States has been judged and turned over to a reprobate mind. Our civilization that was once God-fearing now hates God. A nation that turns its back upon God will find itself in decline and will soon perish. Let us pray, just as in the days of Israel, that we as a nation turn back to God, repent of our sins, and serve Him. For only Jesus is the solution to a fallen world. Amen. Praise God, the victory is already won. No matter how bad it may get, get, we already have the victory in Jesus. God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have the promise that he shall never leave us nor forsake us, no matter how terrible things may be. You and I will not face it alone. As you walk with God, he walks with you. Trust in God and rely on him. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. This life is just a speed bump to glory. You are fully known and loved by God. We have a victory in Jesus. Have patience for God's perfect timing. Yes. God's will shall be done. The cross of Christ is the perfect demonstration of the indestructibility of God's truth and the sovereignty of God. The cross of Christ was planted in unquenchable hope. God is forever on his throne. Truth is indestructible. While the evils of the world rage on, while despotic tyrants rise to power at home and abroad, we set our trust and hope in Christ. While the optimism of the world falters and turns to cynical depression, we have an unquenchable and never failing hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter how bad things may get, we have the victory. No matter what hardships, trials, tribulations, persecutions you may endure, they will pale in comparison to the glories of God to come. A day will come where our Savior shall return on the clouds in glory. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we that remain shall be changed in an instant to meet him in the air. He will come to establish a new kingdom, a new heaven, and a new earth, and a new Jerusalem, where there will be no sickness, no death, no illness, no injury. We will reside forevermore 
in the presence of our Savior, our Lord, and our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in praise and thanksgiving. We pray that you use this message and use each and every one of us as your instrument. We praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your mercy and your grace. We praise you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us in the past, the blessings you bestow today, and all your blessings and promises to come. Lord, we pray that you guide us and keep us and protect us <laughs> as the world grows ever darker. Pray that you be with each and every one of us as we go our separate ways and bring us back together again. Jesus. Praise you now and we praise you always for you alone are God. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Amen.